And good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Sammy page for another Sammy with session. We are here with Martin Brown, who I'm going to introduce in a moment um, for another Sammy with session, kind of carrying on from um, last week's theme around marketing and, and the digital world, but taking it a slightly different way. Um, to introduce you to some more and add value and um, introduce you to Martin and what he does as well. So it's great to be here. Um, the charity is going really well and everything's um, growing and we're getting more and more requests for these live sessions and we're reaching between 100 and 200 people as an audience that are watching it um, live and then afterwards as well so if you're not watching this live and you've got a question from what we ask feel free to send it in or you will see martin's contact details on there as well so i'm going to introduce martin martin thank you ever so much for joining us today and giving up your time i always say time is the most valuable commodity so anyone that shares it with us it's it's quite precious um so yeah so thank you very much i'm gonna hand over to you and let yourself introduce yourself and what you do and just tell give them a little bit of background to you and your story if you would please martin yeah well thank you first of all for inviting me along i really do appreciate that and it's good to be live because I'm not live as often as I should be online. So here we are, live and happening. I'm Martin Brown from Marketing Bugle. Um, I started uh, way back in the 1990s. I was working a daytime job. Remember those? And it, yes. was a day, <laughs> it was a day on, day off thing where I worked 8 o'clock in the morning till 10 at night one day, got the next day off. But I thought rather than putting the washing out and um, putting the vacuum clean around. Why can't I do something on the day off where I'm actually going to make it so that I can actually benefit from it and, and help others and, and make it far more interesting than it is currently? And so I, I joined a, a magazine where I could contribute to those who work from home. So there were all sorts of schemes and scams going around back in those days and we picked the, the best of them the most legal if you like and and we would write about them invite them along and they would pay us money and we would uh, give them a service or uh, um, a product or something along those lines normally how to make money working from home um mm. that went very well for a number of years um but then i i went to, to make my own magazine for my local community with uh, Community Times, actually won an award, so I was thrilled to bits with that. But it was a 48-page glossy magazine, A5 size, and I wrote the whole thing myself, complete blank sheet at the beginning of the month. And um, I was made redundant when, when the daytime business was taken over, so I thought, what can I do? So I went around um, trying to get a job, couldn't find one. So I thought, I know, I'll go back into community magazines. And I started up my own community magazine again for the Pool and Bournemouth area. Um, did about 7,000 copies a month. And guess what? I introduced internet marketing or online marketing. And slowly but surely, that took over. I lost over the years about 85% of, of advertisers. But those that were online and had a QR code, do you remember those things that you could scan with your phone and it took you online? All those advertisers that had... Um, something online where they could take their name and their email and give them a voucher for a coupon or whatever for their business or anything like that they were doing all right so eventually i took the magazine online and then after that the whole business went online i forgot about the magazine i just thought let's just work get offline businesses online and all those years ago from the late 90s right up to date I invented Marketing Bugle, pinching the bugle from an American magazine that was the biggest selling thing ever or something in all times. <laughs> so right, marketing, because I needed a keyword in there. That's what I do. And bugle, the bugle calls out to, to everybody. So Marketing yeah. Bugle, and it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's brilliant. About how, how it happened. Excellent, excellent. So that that's really good, and thank you for that introduction. And it's quite interesting to hear how kind of one thing led to another, led to another, which all too often it does kind of happen like that way, doesn't it? That you kind of will get this idea, and then it takes legs, and it just 
t tends to grow, which I think this is what we've had with the with charity. You kind of have one idea and then all of a sudden it feeds into the next and feeds into the next. Mm -hmm. So, and hearing how you came about the name as well, because that's, you know, so often we interview people with these and that's the one thing we don't really get to hear is, well, how did the name come about? How did you think of the name? And sometimes it's straightforward. It is like their name, but sometimes it's not like yourselves. It's Marketing Bugle. So to hear where that name came from and, and what the thought was, was great. So, And of course, so when yeah, you type Marketing Bugle online, because there's no other Marketing Bugle, I take over the first few pages. So, Which yeah, is well. always good. <laughs> So that's the way to do search engine optimization. Then have a name that no one else uses, and it it comes to the top. I like that idea. Okay, so if anyone has got any questions they want to ask as we go through, if it prompts any questions, you can comment in the section box today, or you can drop through some emails either to sam at sammy um, .co .uk, or you can either drop through an email to ricky at sammy .co .uk, and we will pick them up and add them but in the comment box is obviously the easiest way and then do share what your biggest takeaway is and let us know that you're also getting some value from today as well so i think let's jump into things then and let's have a look before i do though let's obviously put some contact details up for yourself so we've got your website martin as www.marketingbugle.co.uk and if anyone wants to drop you through an email about what we've talked about today martin at marketingbugle.co.uk and you'll go back to them as soon as you can I will. Excellent. I always say that like it's obvious, but you never know. I'm waiting for the day when someone goes, well, no, actually, I tend to leave it. <laughs> 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 they, they probably have, but we'll, we'll keep going. Um, so I think let's let's open up with the first one. And, and the first question I put to you, you know, when you first started your business, what would you say was your biggest challenge for you and how did you overcome this? Well, I've got to start from where <clears throat> I had my own community magazine because selling advertising was what it was all about. Uh, the magazine couldn't exist without the advertisers. And my my biggest problem was that I hated talking on the phone. I was so nervous. The phone was so heavy. And I thought, no, perhaps they'll say this. Perhaps they'll say that. Oh, oh perhaps they won't do it. And I, it, it took me a long time to be able to become comfortable on the phone. And the reason was, I think, I was I was doing it wrong. I was trying to sell the ad on the phone, and I shouldn't have been. I should have been trying to sell the meeting that we were going to have to discuss what was going to happen about the advertising. So as soon as I changed from um, trying to sell my product and service to selling just the meeting, that's when I started to get more comfortable because people were happier to talk about a meeting. Oh, yeah, OK, yeah, we'll meet for coffee, wherever, um, and then we'll discuss it. Because as soon as you start talking about the business, they start asking questions and they make a decision based on what you've just said rather than knowing the bigger picture. So mm. that was that was one of my talking on the phone was was, was the hardest thing. Um, asking for the sale was the other. Once I got there, I would talk to them and when i came out i thought well they haven't had an ad that they know all about me but i thought hang on did i actually ask them for the sell yeah how, how many ads would you like to be in um where would you like to start did you do a budget ad did you want a premium i didn't do that i was always just telling them all about what i did me 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 and forgetting about them so the other thing was asking for the sell and so i, I did bring it into my um sales talk not that it was sales talk because it, it did come rather naturally but um I, I, once i introduced um how many ad how many months would you like to be in for um and some of that they all almost felt they they had to come in then because I, i'd done all this work of come to meet them and explain it all to them and the final thing was charging what the, the what the service was truly worth i was discounting ads left right and center the biggest mistake ever you cannot run a business if you try and keep up with joe down the road people used to say to me you're charging me 45 pounds for this ad it's only 35 down the road with the other mag so what's the difference now what i started doing instead of saying oh, okay i'll come down in price i started to say things like 
well, okay, you can have it for 35, but you don't get the internet ad because I used to run a huge website with, with ads right. displayed on them. I always took something of value away. Otherwise, if I just discounted it, they would say to me, well, why didn't you charge 35 pounds in the first place? What's this 45 pounds? So charging what the service was truly worth was, was dead important. And then later on, when I started building websites, instead of discounting, I actually said to, um, to somebody just to get this out, oh, you, you want the website for 250 pounds? I'll do that. Um, mm -hmm. What I should have said is it, it's 750, it's a thousand pounds, it's a thousand five, whatever, and stick to it. And the day I had the very first, uh, I met somebody at Sammy's, Sammy used to run a little um, workshop things. And I met somebody there who taught me how to charge what I was truly worth. And I, so I went into a pub and I said to the landlord after a chat, it's 750 pounds for the website. He said, what? I said, 750 pounds. I'm sticking to my guns. And he said, it can't be any good for that cheap price. I thought, oh, I should have made much higher. <laughs> and from then on, I charged what they were worth and the work that went into it and what they were going to get out of it. So those mm. are the, the main things that were, were, were really difficult for me and challenging to start with. But I did break through and it does make a difference because if you come across as desperate to get the sell, you won't get the sell. That's all there is to yeah. Yeah, and I think the important thing, I, I there was lots that I took from there, and I'm sure everyone else has as well, but the one thing that I took, uh, well, there's several things I took from there. One was about asking for the sale. You know, we, we've all done that, where we walk away and we go, well, I've told them everything. And you think, I didn't actually ask if they were to get started. You know, it's like, and I a, train, a training once where they talked about, 85 percent i think it is of sales fail because the salesperson hasn't asked for the business and you just go that's quite a quite a quite a large figure so it does make you think okay i really do need to ask so when do you want to get started with this um mm. but yeah it was definitely that and you're absolutely right i think knowing what your true worth is 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 a hard thing because i think we're all guilty of that we all put our own perceptions onto it and go hmm do, is it going to be worth this? What are people going to think? You know, um, so so yeah, so really working out actually what is this worth rather than you know doing it doing a discount all the time. What are they going to get out of it? If somebody's buying from you and they're going to make a lot of money out of what you're supplying, don't charge forty five pounds. Charge one thousand and forty five pounds. Really bump up the price. Exactly. And once yeah. you've got a couple of sales under your belt, you don't go back. You you target the audience that can afford your services. Yeah. Yeah. And it, another thing I think is also quite true is that actually if someone really sees the value in something and really wants it, mm -hmm. they'll find the money for it. You know, um, uh, things I've done in the past and we've had conversations about it and I've said, oh, you know, so that'll be two hundred and forty five pound. And they go, oh, I don't really know if I've got the money today. You know, I don't really know if I can afford it. And then you ask the question, OK, so just quickly, if your TV broke tonight, what would you do? Where, why I'd go and get a new one. How much would it cost you? Oh, it cost me about 200 quid. Where would you find that money from? Oh, I'd find it. And it's because it's valuable enough that they go, yeah, I really need this. So, so yeah, so absolutely. I, yeah, target audience and, and fine. Um, Liz has said that she's making notes. So that's good. Hello. So we've got some value. Um, the team are on as well. So they're saying hi all. Lorraine is on and says good morning. And Liz has also said Lorraine, yeah. hi. So, yeah. So um, Liz, uh, Lorraine has just said it's reassuring to know that other people find it a challenge asking for the sale and the price um i don't know what would you say martin i always say that actually when you get used to it and you do it a few times you get comfortable with it and it almost becomes a habit to ask mm -hmm. it's your so mind it's, it's getting into your head what i used to do is get negative thoughts and i i i pre-assessed it incorrectly so you've got to reframe what you're going into so that um that the whole um, perception of it is is just value and w when I got these negative thoughts in my head I did a strange thing but it works I laid down on the floor on my bed and imagine there was a somebody was cutting a cake out of my head in that rectangle section and that was the negative they removed the negative and then I thought of something that always makes me happy and joyous and that would replace it because what I constantly do is tell negatives to go away but unless you replace that with a positive, 
it, it, it doesn't work. You must put a positive in its place. And then when you go in to deal what you're having a challenge with, it really works because your mindset's changed and you're going in yeah. and the, the potential client is down there and you're up here and you feel in control. And if you're confident, you're in control and you, you sound like you know what you're talking about, they will listen to you. You become the go to person. You become the authority on the subject. And yes, once you've done it twice, three times, four times, five times, you don't look back because then you yeah. know who the time wasters are, the tire kickers and the rest of it. And you, you say, OK, you're just looking to come down on price. And I, I'm not doing that. Uh, when I talk to them, I put the, the, their negatives, um, any objections into my sales talk so that I've already explained to them. So when it comes to asking for the price, they can see that, that it's, it's well worth and it's, it's good value for money. And that's what I do with everybody. I give them value for money. I never try and just make a fast yeah. buck that you won't survive. Yeah, yeah. And actually, um, Liz has also said that, you know, on price, you can always come down, not so easy to go up in price. So, you know, she's quite right as well that actually, you know, if you suddenly go, OK, I'm losing a lot of sales, maybe I'm a little bit too expensive. You can do your research and you can always drop it slightly if you need to. But I think the important what you said there, Martin, is about holding your nerve a little bit, isn't it? And it's just you know, your guns. If and, someone yeah. says, look, £250 is, is too expensive, say, I tell you what, we'll keep it at £250, but I'll give you a website, a, a basic website to go with it. Ooh. And after your conversation, you know what their turn on points are. And so you can yeah. home in on those and say, you keep telling me that you can't work your blog. I'll train you up on a blog that's all drag and drop or something like that in with the price. Add value, don't discount, because once you discount, you devalue what you're selling. And that is yeah. a no. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I like that idea of the adding the value in and, and picking different things that, that will um, work for them. Definitely. So I think it's coming on to our kind of our second question then. Um, when thinking about promoting their business and the work they do, how should people plan and what do they need to think about where, where you come from? Well, I can only at this stage talk about online. So um, I would say that you you the first thing you must do is have your own domain name. People go for these free websites. Um, but unfortunately, I've never ranked a free website in my life. I, I can only um, rank something if it's their own domain name. And on the website, have a sign up form so that you can take the name and the email address of the visitor and you give them something for it. It could be some sort of download um, that used to be ebooks all the time, but now you can give them guides, you can give them um, blueprints, uh, you can give them videos and audio. Uh, I know so many people are doing so well with this. And what it does, it builds a list on your email marketing system of potential customers, and that's who you sell to. You you send out regular emails in a sequence to them that are all predetermined. So it's on autopilot. If you go on holiday, it still works for you. But what you're doing, you're nudging them to go for the purchase to buy from you. You must build a relationship with your potential customer. If you don't, they won't buy from you. When you do, the relationship builds to a trust and that people only buy from people that they trust. And so somebody else could come along and say, oh, I'm doing what Martin's doing, but cheaper. They'll say, no, I get an email from him regularly. He phones me. He's on live calls with me. I, I've, been, I've known him for, so I'm going to buy from him. He's my go-to person. And also, you don't get emails written on your cards, business cards, like at Hotmail, at Yahoo, at Gmail. It looks bad when you see Martin143 underscore 26 at Hotmail.com written on the side of a van. You know, I've seen it. Um, yeah. you, if you have... Um, sales at marketingbugle.com or .co.uk, I've got hundreds of them, um, then it looks so much more professional. And in the long run, that will that will help your business because there's nothing worse than building a, a, a portal or an empire, some, some people, on freebie stuff. And then you need to move it when the business does take off, and it will, if you're doing it right, of course, and we are doing it right, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. All these schools <laughs> are about. Um, then, um, it, it, it'll all, all work for you. And what I'm, I'm finding is that with the freebies, the, the, the SEO, the, um, the Google looks at it and says, 
if you're serious about your business, you'll have your own domain name. And when they see Wix and Weebly and all that sort of thing, um, you can't rank them. So it's only £10 a year. In fact, it's a lot less than £10 a year for a .co.uk domain name. And um, and it's, it's cheap as chips to have your own hosting. And websites now are all drag and drop to build. Um, I can teach somebody in 15 minutes how to build a website. It's, it's that easy nowadays. It used to be mm. all HTML code. So th those are the things I would say uh, with your business, getting started and, and going online. Get those things in place. You must build a list. And the final thing is have continuity payments. Have something you can charge them a regular uh, fee for. Um, mm. otherwise, otherwise, you can't survive. There's too much month at the end of the money if – you just charge so it's 50 quid for that buy you yeah. there's no um so what you do people come to your website they're interested in what you're doing you need to capture their name and their email and you do that by offering them this freebie download as soon as they do that they join your email list and then you you can then work with them for free without paying for any ads and i've got pubs on board where i send one email out and they sell out a whole evening that's yeah. how powerful email is and it's free it's yeah free. Yeah. Yeah. And it's brilliant. And I think, you know, capturing that data um, when because if they come into your website anyway, then you might as well you might as well have that as a working tool for you. If you if you've already attracted that person through any advertising or promotion, then to be able to capture that and send it back out, you won't need to. Like you say, you've got this email list then and you've got a working. So, yes, yeah, so that's really good. That's really good. Definitely. It frightens me to death when people say I don't need a website because I've got a Facebook page. Well, Facebook <laughs> can change their algorithm at any time. And they have. Yeah. Done. When you send out a post, it used to reach 100 percent. So if 100 people signed up as yeah. following you or liking you, 100 people would would see on their timeline your post. Now it's mm. less than six percent. Less than six people see your post when it goes up because they've changed the algorithm. Now you've got to pay to get the reach, and so that's yeah. why it's important to have your own website where you are in control and nobody can touch that list of, of names yeah. you've got on your database. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely good. And I think you're absolutely right with with social media and stuff being in control. They're they're more and and I always advocate. You know, it is a good way to social media is there. There are a lot of people on there, so. Yeah. It is a good way, way to build some contacts and have some social marketing that doesn't cost you anything because you can do it for free. But like you say, with the website, you've got that 100 percent control over it. So definitely, um, definitely the way forward if someone's serious about the business, I think. So in terms of considering websites, then if we've, we, we've sort of touched on having their own website, what is the two most important things that people need to think about? Right. The first thing people say to me is that they want to have all the bells and whistles look beautiful and, and, and what have you. So they go out and they buy, they put all their budget pretty well on a web designer, which is fine if you're a web designer, that, you know, that's your job and you're happy with that. But what I find is web designers want it to look good and it does look good, but does it convert? When somebody lands on the page, do they turn into potential customers? You'll find they don't because when I build my websites, every one I've built is pretty simple. You look at the Amazon website, that is not complicated at all. In fact, it's, it's it looks like a four-year-old's built it. It's so basic. And yet yeah. it works because they've got the elements on there that create the cell. So you enter what you want. There it is. And all the only extra thing they've got is you might also be interested in because you put something in there's something else down there similar and you think oh yeah i'll buy that as well so when you when you have your website um have the elements on it and the modules on it that will convert so right at the top i have my headline sub headline a video or an image um and a sign up form because you can offer them the the one thing that they're going to be excited about what would make them really buzz about joining your email list they're not going to do it for free. They're not going to say, OK, here's my name and email. Um, I've joined your newsletter. Now they say, what's in it for me? What's in yeah. it for you? Get this free download. So you must make your um, website do um, have a purpose. So do you want it to be a, a information portal? Are you selling something? Do you want to take their name and email? There must be a purpose for it. And so once once you 
you achieve that with the website, that's all you need. You don't need where the cursor goes up to the menu and butterflies fly around it and drawers open and a slider goes across. Those sliders just do not convert into cells. None of the most successful people in the world ever use sliders because the slider comes along and you go to click on it and it slides away. Like, How do I get that back? I was in, oh, it's gone. Oh, they're not going to wait for what they want to come up. Don't have a slider and they slow your website down considerably. So have a website that converts, not that looks nice. It, yes, my websites do look good, but they're not all the bells and whistles that some of these estate mm -hmm. agents have where it does 101 jobs. And the first thing you do is say, oh, there's so much here to do. I'm not going to make any decision because I don't know what to do. And they'll go away. And that's by the time it's finished loading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so keep, keep it simple, definitely. And I think there's something to be said for, for the keep it simple. You know, we, we like things simple. And mm -hmm. I remember um, someone said once, you know, when you're when you're marketing out to people, when you're talking about something, have three main points and stick to them, because actually with the three, they won't remember much more after the three points anyway. So it's like have the three main points you want to get across and then just, you know, stop at that point. Um, but yeah, um, Lorraine's just saying that as a customer, um, she likes these days that you don't have to tell a company your life story mm -hmm. to engage with them. Um, I think that's quite a good, how much, when, when you're capturing information from people, you obviously we want the name and the email address. Is there anything else that you kind of want to know? One or two things that you think maybe kind of adds to it, or is it just simply start with the name and the email address? Right. I always start with not even the name, first name. I say yeah. first name and email because the more you ask them for, the lower your conversion rate. So what I do, I advertise on Facebook. I send hordes of traffic to a proven landing page, and yeah. it converts. Now. They won't sign up if I ask for them, uh, let's say, um, what's your telephone number? Where do you live? Um, what did you have for breakfast? How often do you brush your teeth? If you start going deeper and deeper into these things, that's, well, I'm not filling out that. So I just ask for those two things. Once they're on your list, that's a different story because then yeah. you can approach them. They'll get to know you, like your emails because they haven't unsubscribed yet. They very rarely unsubscribe unless you really upset them. Um, you can get to know them and then you can ask them for more. You can send them to a page that asks them for more. You can send them to a survey or a, a quiz or something of fun interaction. And I, I, I've got all that on board. And that's why people love being on the list because there's always something happening and yeah. a 30 day challenge or something, you know, anything. Yeah. And once you've got them involved, those that are going to be buyers, when they're ready to buy, they'll buy from you. And most people that buy from you will buy again. That's another thing that, I should have mentioned earlier don't just have one product have follow-up products that where you can build on what you're, mm. what, what you're doing so if i do a website i'll say would you like the care plan that goes with it for maintenance and updates and uh, security patches and yes they do and so i can charge for that they'll always come back for more but if they come back and say what else do you do and like, nothing it, it's not very good and you're not making any profit so yeah. so you need a continuity plan um where you can sell something and then have some some plan in place where they're paying you each month or each um, uh, year even because you could be doing an online course where you say yeah. well, pay for an online course and um, and then I'll introduce you to another online course before this one's finished and give you a discount on it and things like that so you've always got an income so you can plan ahead otherwise your business dries up and you're you're constantly looking for new people and that's that can be mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, you know, it's a lot harder to build a new relationship than to maintain an existing relationship, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, and, and existing relationships, the longer they go on and the more you maintain them, actually, they'll introduce you to new people as well because they go, well, I work with this guy, you know, he's really great. Or I work with this girl. Always great. ask for the recommendation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I like the way you were saying about the um, having additional products to sell. You know, one thing I've always talked about is time leverage. And um, when you're working with a customer, if you have additional things to sell, you have a customer buying two or three products. It saves you getting an extra two customers and you can only spend the same time with one customer. So instead of having three hours, you've got one hour and you've leveraged your time. So, yeah, no, brilliant. Brilliant. And um, 
I think it's coming on because we talked about like you know people paying for things and I think people value things when they pay for things when it's free you don't necessarily have a value to it um, but obviously a lot of people that work working with us at the start their budgets are quite low or and they have kind of little or no budget in terms of gaining exposure so what would be your suggestion to them about being able to gain exposure on the smallest budget possible right well nowadays it's it's harder to when we're talking online to mm. get the organic customer that's the one that naturally types into google something a phrase about your business and then they're taken to your website and that's how you get a customer um i used to be able to put a notice on the website uh, about filling downloading a form filling it out putting a check in with it and sending it off to me and then i'd send you whatever i was selling and people would do that they don't now and they never will now it's it's a case of it has to be instant so to build your list in the first place i would this is where social media is a bit of a gold mine because your potential customer whether you like social media or not i don't particularly like facebook but because my customers are on there i use it as a database for my advertising that's valuable so um your customers are likely to be on there they're not there to buy. They, they don't join Facebook to buy. They they join Facebook to communicate with each other and, and uh, you know, interact. So what I do, I, I, I take the the subject matter of the of the business niche that you're in. I search for groups in Facebook and I join those groups. It might take you two hours a day, but you might say, I'm not spending that time. But it's it's time that will pay dividends later on. So. Once you get to those groups, you look for the people that are that are making the boldest statements, that are getting all the comments, and you join in with commenting from them as soon as they post. So whoever posts after that sees your comment. Now, what happens is after when when you realize when they realize that you know what you're talking about because you're answering questions, you're posing questions, you're making posts, the best thing to do is comment on the expert post, not just thanks, that was great, but add something to the conversation, take it forward. What people will do is click on your name and go to your page to find out who you are. And that will get you a few people on your database straight away because you've got followers. And then your call to action on your posts should be to go to the website to sign up for your newsletter. Or you can have a link to your newsletter or to your email marketing system straight away. That's one way of building it online. The other is to do blog posts on your uh, aforementioned website that capitalize on one subject per post. So if, if you're selling a widget, talk about an aspect of it, but just that and nothing else on your post. Google will pick up on the keywords. And when somebody types that in, send them to your website. And the more people that go to your website, the more appropriate and relevant you are and the more it will send. Google doesn't rank websites, it ranks web pages. So that's where you can capitalize. If you've got a good article in you, or you can get somebody to write one for you, put it on there because it pays dividends over time. It's a bit slower, a bit of a slow process. Offline, go to networking uh, groups uh, where you just meet up with like-minded people with their own business. Don't try and sell anything, but rather, um, for example, I go to a networking group and they've got... Um, a brochure it's a lovely brochure with the pictures of each person in and it's got their email address in and when they sign up to go to the networking group it's on the condition that people can contact them using their email well if you're starting a new business you can grab all their emails put them onto your email marketing system and send out one email to them all introducing yourself and offering them something you know, for free to get on your list now, I did it with new to business in Bournemouth, which starts up again in March. That's free. You don't pay a penny. And yet I got 150 names from day one. Now, a few of those would unsubscribe. But what a way of boosting my database. And several mm -hmm. of those have gone on to be clients in either a small way or they've jo at least joined my list so I can upsell them later. So that's how I would if you've got no budget, low budget, 
then I would certainly say that's a good no cost, low cost way of getting people on yeah. your database. So at least you can start talking to people. Otherwise, you're sat there saying, where's my next customer coming from? Or you place an ad in a magazine waiting for one person to say, I'm interested, I think, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> All you do, with magazine ads, unfortunately, now all you're doing is paying for the distribution and the printing because you don't know whether it works or not. When you advertise online, you only pay if they click your ad. So, yeah, great way of, of getting the word out there. Yeah. So um, one, a question's just come in at the team. Um, um, I'm starting on social media. How often should I post? Um, every day. Post something every day. But don't just post any old junk. The, People know what clickbait is. And so if you ask, um, what does anybody think of this view? You know, what a load of rubbish. Ask something sensible that's really going to drive the conversation. And if they can see you're genuine, they'll start liking and replying. Now, if you don't do it very often, what, once a week, people aren't going to wait for that or people might miss it. Get it out there every day, twice a day, three times a day on social media. Um, you can schedule these things and there are programs where you can do a hundred posts and line them up ready for scheduling, which is what we can do. But um, the best thing I find is when you live, get an idea and, and you type it in there and it doesn't have to be long, but vary your posts as well. Make it from images, text, video, uh, some interaction thing, but make sure every post has got a call to action. Don't just leave it. Oh, I've read the post. That's it. Make sure that, there's a link there that takes them somewhere or a link in the in the comments that take them somewhere. Um, have something that takes it forward and and nudges them into becoming um, your your potential client. Excellent. So, anyway. um, Lorraine has just um, commented that something um, she's had success with on LinkedIn is a follower person. Um, she's on the most basic package. And she said people are curious about people that are interested in them. So I think that's that's one way that's becoming apparent on social media, isn't it? That following of people. So many people forget about LinkedIn and it's very powerful, especially when you do go on the paid plan because there's so much more you can do. But yes, if you follow somebody, what I notice is I don't go on LinkedIn very often for myself, but I, I do for clients and their thing. But um, what I find is when I do go on, the number of people reading my profile rockets. So just one interaction can make a difference. Yeah. But yes, post on there regularly with links, with useful information, share stuff, comment on other people's. If somebody's a real authority on their subject to do with what you're doing, comment, get, get them buzzing. And if you do it every day, over time, it'll build up. It's the consistency that works. If people keep seeing you, They'll in the end, they'll say, right, I'll, I'll reply and, and get in contact. I'll comment. I will connect with you. I will click that link in the email that joins up. Mm. Um, and, and yes, well done, Lorraine. That, that is a great strategy. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Michael's saying um, he said, especially when you're very interesting, laugh out loud. So I think, you know, we all know Lorraine from when we interviewed. And I think um, her her LinkedIn will definitely grab additional interest because of what she does and where she where, where she goes. But, yeah, I think being interesting is the key. Like you said, you know, having a valid no one wants to know that you're eating chicken curry for dinner and you're in Tesco's buying it. You know, <laughs> you're right. Add value. Definitely. Um, brilliant. So um, how I think I think we've already covered this, but we've talked about how you started to build your customer base when you started your business, really. But just uh, delve into that a little bit more about when you first got going, obviously. Oh have changed but if you were starting marketing bugle now what would you do to start your customer base now well straight away it's got to be online if i had no money and an internet connection um i, I could i could probably do it um i would start definitely with email again that's free mailchimp is free for the first yeah. couple of thousand people i think some like that there's a few freebies out there now anyway but there, is, there are lots of free tools that get you going and then you only start paying once you've reached a certain level and you don't mind paying then because you're getting the income. Yeah. So I would I would look at affiliate offers. And, and what I mean by that is there's, there's a, a website called clickbank.com and they 
they sell books, they sell videos, they sell well, all sorts of stuff, but books mainly um, and and things to do online. So you can become affiliated to them and you can sell them to your audience. And when you do, you don't have to advertise or anything apart from telling them. And then you'll get a commission for that. And it's huge. It's like 75 percent commission plus. And the reason it's so wow. high is because the person that is is made the let's say it's a an ebook course um so it's a course about a subject and there's it's a multi-part and they're selling that for say a hundred dollars you'll get i, I say dollars because i deal predominantly with online with american but so you'll get 75 dollars back for that every time you sell one now getting started is ideal by becoming an affiliate to all sorts of things you become can become an affiliate to uh, amazon.com.co.uk um where you advertise something on on amazon somebody clicks that link amazon will give you a, a commission for that so you don't actually have to do anything bar tell people about it so i've had web pages before about um barbecue things because they were quite expensive when they came out these things and and I, and I was getting a decent commission on them but the good thing is when they go to buy the barbecue if they bought a 54 inch color tv at the same time you'd also get commission on that so <laughs> even though you weren't advertising it. and so i started off by be, becoming affiliated with other people and it's free to do so you don't have to pay so um when you if you've got just one product and you haven't got anything else on the back end to sell them, what you can do is look for an affiliate product that is similar or complementary to what you're selling and say to your email list, there could be a hundred on your list or whatever, it could be thousands. And you say, Oh, I've just read this book on Amazon. Um, it's all about how to make your grass green in, in five days and it stays green no matter how hot the sun. Something like that. If you'd like to read it, click here. So click. They go to Amazon, they buy it, you get the commission. So you actually got extra things to sell to people, even though they're not yours. And um, people have done it with insurance. Say, yeah, right, okay, you're buying this. How would you like to an insurance? So they've been in touch with an insurance company and they've said to them, if I sell plans, can you give me a percentage? Yes, they will. They're bound to. They're not going to say, no, we don't yeah. want any sales. So, um, but most people online have got an affiliate scheme built with it. Nearly everything's got an affiliate scheme. And the biggest is Amazon. Um, and it's free to join. Excellent. That, that's really, really good. I like that tip as well. Um, and clickbank.com, I think we might have a few viewers going to have a look at that. So so we did put it up just now. So let's have a look. So can you share? I mean, there's been lots of tips. I know that, you know, Liz said earlier she was getting notes from this and uh, there's been so many tips that have come through. Um, but just wondering, can you share three top tips when creating um, social media business page? So if someone's setting up their Facebook social media business page, what are the top three tips? Obviously, I think one's going to be have a link to the website. Um, but what would be your top three tips with with that? Um. I would say um, ensure you have plenty of content already in place so that when new visitors come along, they're not going to see just one or two posts, which looks a bit naff. I think Sammy did that. She put a few posts on this group. So when you joined, there's something happening. Yeah. And again, you've got to have all the information that they could ever want right above the fold. And Facebook, for example, is is designed like that post on a regular basis for de for definite be consistent post regularly answer questions while encouraging people to be interactive um if you don't ask them to be interactive quite a few people will just um lurk they'll they'll look but won't do anything if you've got a good group people will talk to each other and that forms the content. So you don't have to rush around finding content. They're making it for you with their conversation. As long as you're keeping an eye on what's being said, because when the group grows big, you'll get somebody making a comment that upsets people and they get flamed and you've got a little row going on. So, yeah. so you have to be in, get an admin to keep control of that. I'm an admin of one particular site. It gets quite fiery and it's full of lawyers and solicitors. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and have a purpose for every post. Um, what do you want it to achieve? Have a CTA, I'll call it a call to action, like read my latest blog post, like you suggested there, uh, view my new video, join my email list. 
ask a question that people can reply to encouraging others to do the same. So there would be my three main or four even main things to do. Keep it active. Don't forget it. It's so easy to make a page and leave it for a few days or weeks. Even. And when you come back, there is just, you know, dust blowing around for it. <laughs> going on. You, you must look after it. And better than a page is a group because pages are restricted too much. Groups, everybody gets notified when something goes on. Once they're once they're there, you can do much more with a Facebook group than anything else. I know we keep on about Facebook, but that is by far the best platform I've found for mm. promoting your business in this way, um, especially if you haven't got a high budget. But they are get, making it so, yeah, you're going to have to pay for ads at some time. But when you do, boy, what a difference it makes. You can turn yeah. just a few trickle of people coming to your site to tens of thousands. And the beauty is if they don't sign up, you can retarget them and remarket them um, with another ad encouraging them to come along, knowing that they're 100 percent interested because they already just clicked on your last ad. Um, and then yeah. the conversion rate is much higher and that your list will start to grow um, oh, like gangbusters. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. And the one thing that we have found, I think, that we've um, that we've said with with social media, and I know there have been some talks that actually is moving more towards this paid ad situation um the one thing that we found and and certainly have had people talk about before is that when you pay for ads um on facebook and on social media um after the ad has finished there can be a tendency that your um your views and people seeing that page and seeing that group tends to drop Mm -hmm. So, so you then have to pay for another one to bring it back up. And what what are your thoughts around that? Right. The, the, the secret of, of running ads is if you if you design an ad and put it out there, people say advertise and pay per click online doesn't work. That's because they're doing it wrong. What what I do, I put out six ads at the same time. It's the same ad, but with slight variations. So I vary the title, the image, maybe the color, maybe a sentence. Um, something in it is different from the last. So I run six or six go out and they all get shown evenly to the same amount of people, not the same people, the same amount of people. So the reach is going to be wh whatever you, your, your target audience are going to be. But Facebook will automatically show the best ad, the, the one that gets the best conversions, the best click throughs um, to um, your audience. So what you do, you take that ad and you get rid of the other five and do five similar to the one that's won, the one that's getting the most clicks. And you'll find that it's, it's normally the same one wins again, but sometimes another one does. Ultimately, after doing this, what is called split testing, after you've done that, there will be one ad that works every time. That's what you put the big bucks into. Then you watch the difference. Now, mm. You'd be silly to stop the ad then because it's bringing you in so many people and obviously sales down the line. So you keep that ad running. You rinse and repeat. And so long as it's getting that many conversions, you just keep it running. And it can do several months without you touching it and it will run. And yes, your your click through rate and your views and your likes will go up naturally because your ads everywhere. And of course, they click and it takes you there. Facebook do reward you if you put a good ad out and they actually make it cheaper. We got the video post down to a penny a click, which was it's, it's quite hard to do nowadays. But it, that's how good our ads were. I was running ads for 29 companies um, and they were they were all successful to certain levels. Um, and if they weren't, you can tell to the click where it's going wrong. So if they click on your ad, they land on your landing page, but don't sign up. Why aren't they signing up? Find out. Look at your landing page. See if the wording's right. See if the form's working. Um, yeah. Is there anything going wrong? And and that is the beauty. You can measure every click. And if you can measure it, you can make money out of it. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Lorraine has said, um, could you give us a couple of examples of questions that we could use? I think that goes back to something we were talking about previously. Um, just trying to just having a just having a mind block and thinking. But Martin, do, if you're. Uh, is there any particular questions that you're thinking of that that Lorraine could use? Can you give her some examples? Well, if you 
it's got to be to do with your niche. The people that are on your page or they've joined your email list, list because they're interested. As soon as you vary off of that, and it's tempting to do so sometimes just because you want to post something different, um, you'll lose them. They'll unsubscribe from your list or they'll they're not bother visiting or they'll unlike you or whatever. So you, first of all, to think, you've got to think, what will my audience um, like to be involved with? So you could say, um, I'm to do with Marketing Bugle. Um, who uses video in their marketing? Well, the person that uses video will want to tell you about it because he's, he's, he's there. It's 100% with you. He said, oh, I do. Or you could say, who uses video um, and what's the benefits? And then when the benefit comes up, you've got someone else saying, oh, I didn't know it did that. Oh, I might try video. And then you could say, is it expensive doing video? Not anymore. You can do it for free on, on, on online now. Uh, it's basic stuff, but it can work for a post. Ask anything that will get them buzzing. So what would make you buzz about your own business if you went to a talk or presentation or something? What would get you buzzing? What would you want to know? What would you like to be asked? And and you you become the boss. So you say, OK, on my website and on my um, posts, I'll be asking those questions. And once you get it buzzing, the comments got longer and longer and longer. And of course, Facebook loves that. So your mm -hmm. reach increases. The next time you post, it will go out to more people because more people have interacted. The best thing you can ever do is not just like, but comment on a post, not just that was great. Thanks. Take it forward. Say that was great because when I was doing it, I, this happened. You, you get something moving forward. Facebook notices that it's got an algorithm that notices it and your reach will go higher and higher and higher. So ask questions that would give you a buzz. I can't say specific ones because I'm not in your niche, but anything um, that that would get a reaction, but not yeah. not like, oh, I'm thinking of buying a house. What do you think of this? That doesn't work. You've got it's got yeah. to be some really hard edged to do with your business yeah. um, and get them going. Um, some people use money. They say, oh, I made 500 pounds yesterday. Do you want to know how? And yeah. We were the niche. And somebody's how, how, how? Yes. Tell me, PM me and all that. And you say, well, this is how I did it. And it didn't cost me anything. And they they yeah. tell you, you you've got to be genuine. You can't just trick them. You, you, yeah. and, and so long as there's something going on, your Facebook accounts will get more and more likes, more and more views. People will come back more often and they will. As on the right hand side, it says invite members. They'll start inviting people. And of course, recommendation, strongest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Lorraine has said thanks. That really, really helped. So, um, so I think we've we've covered what she was looking for in that one. So, I think the final thing just to put to you is is knowing what you know now from your journey. If you were to travel back to the you starting out, what would you say? What would be your best advice to yourself? Right, as we started, charge what your service is truly worth. Most people I speak to at networking events are undercharging by far and, and that you cannot survive in business. Um, ask for the sale, always ask for the sale. Um, it's so easy to get wrapped up in your own chat that you don't bother and you forget. Never discount or devalue your product, just add value. Remove all the negatives from your, from your mind, as I said, and replace them, you must replace them with positives. Don't ever look positive to get the sell. Don't, don't ever look, sorry, desperate to, to because people, their subconscious can see that you're desperate. Oh, um, okay, I'll do it for 40, 45 pounds. Is that okay? Oh, I can do it cheaper if you like. I can do it more often. Yeah. And it, it just looks bad. Yeah. Do it. Um, I would say um, it, it, if they're not going to buy from you, sometimes you just need to move on. You know you're not going to get it. So don't don't get hung up about it. It's it, it's. I know that I don't like saying it's a numbers game, but sometimes the more people you go with your expertise, the more chance you've got of converting somebody anyway. So um, I would also say use continuity payments, build a list of potential customers every time that list without a list. You're not in business. You've got to have that list um, via email marketing and work with them. And it's cheaper and much more effective than any other strategy in the long run. Email marketing to the right audience, it, it just, it, it can be your business. One email out to your list can bring you in an awful lot of money. 
Brilliant, brilliant. Well, I think that has covered everything. Um, obviously, it's still open at the moment. If anyone's got any comments, wants to share any value, add any final thoughts or questions, then you are more than welcome to. So please pop questions and final thoughts into the comments and let us know what your biggest takeaway has been today so far. Let us know the, what value you're getting and that you're getting value from it. Um, but I think we've had a great session today. Um, I just want to share your contact details again, Mark, uh, Martin. So we've got marketingbugle.co.uk as the website. Yeah, I'm, here got... <laughs> I'm here all week. I'm here all week. Yeah, he's there all week. He's there all week. Um, and we've got Martin at marketingbugle.co.uk as well. So if you want, if you want to email, if you've got any questions for us at the charity, obviously you've got Sam at sammy.co.uk, and you've also got Ricky at sammy.co.uk. Um, oh, we've got some comments coming in. Yeah, so Lorraine is saying phenomenal session. Thanks ever so much. Thank you, um, oh, Liz has got a question. I don't think we've. Have we? I don't think we've covered that, so I'm just going to check. How do I find? How do I find interesting to post? Oh, how do I find interesting things to post? Have trouble finding different things of interest. So, what's the suggestion? I know we mentioned about ClickBank and affiliate marketing there. So, there's the affiliate stuff through ClickBank that you can do. But how do you find the interesting post to post? Yeah, what I do, I. I... I tend to associate anything that's going on. Uh, if something's in the world is is causing a buzz or creating a buzz, then I associate with it. So look at anniversaries, look at world news, look at trends that are going on and associate them with your business. So in my case, if, if something happened, um, which it has done during the pandemic, and that's the first time we've mentioned this, <laughs> that word, <laughs> um, then, then I, I could say, I, I've actually got one here. I've, I've made a book and I, I, I did a book, what you could do during the pandemic. And so I did a post about you could get this book for free when you join my list. So straight away, I did a research online. Look, have you ever heard of Google Trends? Yeah. Yeah, just type in your subject matter to Google Trends and see what comes up and see what's trending, even if it's only a little bit, and you can write about it. Look for other articles that are promoting your business indirectly because they say something good about it. I did a wonderful one with solar energy, solar panels. Uh, somebody really praised the, the technology. And one of my clients is a huge solar panel company. So I took the article, put it on their blog and linked to it. And it got loads of views and, and buzz interest. So, yes, it's research and it does take time to research. But you find all sorts of things. You can make something out of a sentence. You You can just pull something out of it and turn it around. One of my clients makes a video or two videos every week. They're only a couple of minutes long based on just a quick thing. Um, that And I put it out on YouTube live streaming and then it gets put on a YouTube channel. So you've got a whole list of them, but they're all fascinating. They're all things you think, well, yeah, that's, that's a good point. And, and so or now all she does is just look around at what's happening. So with the Internet, you know, as your main tool, typing in to search engines and finding things, uh, you'll notice there's an autocomplete. So if you type something in to the on the address bar, other suggestions will come below. Mm. Uh, you can actually get software that finds it all for you. But in its simplest form, you type in your your subject and uh, what people are actually typing in comes below. You can take that and then put them in as questions and then get answers. And there's all the content you ever need. Just put an image with it put a short video with it video i do if you're not using video use it 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 magnifies your your output by 800 percent you, you, you know the interaction is fantastic and so finding content is fun i have got software that will automatically do it for me where i put in a question or, or subject matter and it comes back with hundreds of ideas from around the internet and i just make up things from it put it on my website Another thing you can do if you're good at talking, I, I'm no good at talking. <laughs> if you are, um, do a podcast and then take the script from the podcast and put it under the the, the audio on your website because you get a double thing. Then people can listen to it if they haven't got time to read um, while they're doing something else. And also Google ranks you for what all the keywords you've got in the conversation on your podcast. So 
um, do a video like this, stand in front of your, your webcam or your, um, your iPhone, whatever, and then just do a little talk, put that up there, go live with it. If you don't want to go live with it, pre-record it and send it out on a live stream separately. So you haven't got to worry about the technical issues. There's all sorts of things you can do for posts that vary them, um, do some funny ones, do some serious stuff. But each one must have a call to action where you say, do this, go there, answer this. Um, you've got to promote your business in every single item. Otherwise, it's pointless. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Martin, thank you ever so much. That's been a great session this week. Yeah. I know there's been loads of value from it. Um, and I'm sure we shall have more people watching later. If we get any questions, obviously, we'll send them through. But people have seen your contact details in here as well. Um, so if anyone has got any questions about digital marketing, then Martin is the person to drop an email through to. Um, and you can test the fun and interactive emails that are going to come back as well with the bits and pieces he puts in there. So um, it's been brilliant to talk to you. Thank you ever so much. And you sign up to my newsletter, by the way, because you get a monthly magazine about marketing. It's very simple and basic, but it is, it's, it's good. And just go to the website and um, you can sign up on from the front page. It's Wonderful. free. free. Wonderful. So there you are. So there's a magazine all about marketing as well included if you sign up. So that's brilliant. OK, thank you ever so much, everyone. Thank you, Martin. Um, Michael saying thank you, Martin, as well. So there's a few people Michael. coming on. They'll start to uh, fin they'll start to filter through the um, the uh, co comments now. Liz says thanks very, for, for that. Very helpful. So it's been great. Thank you ever so much. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.